We'll make a clapping noise when it closes. That's normal. <laughs> It's really tight on that one. one little corner of the propeller blade. It's very tight. It's it is. Tight. And there's a little guide, guide thing there, right? There's a ghost warning right now. Just press that. Just press that. Okay. So right now, the battery temp and battery charge is showing, but the motor and controller temperatures are off. Steve, if you wanted to deploy this and fly, you bump it up once. Yep. One tap. Really? Yep. Where? Where? So it's coming across. Swap it. No, no. Now, if you want to touch the ball, it'll be all the way. That's why I was curious to see that. What are you saying about the yeah. I'll show you. Yeah. So, Steve, yeah. if you could, yeah. without touching the just bump the toggle switch down one time. Oh, yeah. Sorry, no. Never mind. <laughs> That's a toggle. Yeah. The wrong toggle. Okay. So, silver one. Yeah. Let, let's let, let it boot up. Yeah. Let it boot up completely. It's good. It's good. It's trainable. It's trainable. It's good. So, you, so you can check people out on this in the future. So, the little toggle below the throttle. Without touching the throttles, so just clear. touch the so little toggle down one. Yeah. one. Yeah. 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 All right. So I'm going to right. answer your question now, okay? Yeah. 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 But, you know, you got it. Okay. So, if I wanted to see the charge indicator lights on batteries, I could just look in there. There's no know. feedback to this room anywhere. Oh, it shows on the screen, oh, but I, I can double check. Cross check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised how small diameter the prop is. For, so, so it seems like yeah, so, so bigger. They do. But, but here's the thing. Okay. Here, here's the thing. Is the aircraft was already designed as a pure glider and a jet glider, and at the outset they thought they could do an electric sustainer. And then as they started to um, work on it, they realized that the numbers were working for it to be at least a self-launch drive. Okay? And then they started to see, well, how big of a motor can we put in here? What's the space we have structurally and all that? And, and ultimately, it was all the space constraints in here between fitting an actuator, um, making sure that they could make a tail boom that was structurally sound enough, so that drove the blade length. So the blade is actually smaller than ideal, uh, but they optimized it to still work. Okay. It's a typical RPM if you're at full bore, full everything, I'm seeing like 4,400. So it's humming. It's humming. The tips are not supersonic. Okay. And then I generally dial it back to 4,100, something like that, 4,000, just find a sweet spot. What's the end of I can't remember right now. This is 18 meters in this configuration? What you're saying is 18, yeah. This is Teflon, so that when you put your tape on, it, it doesn't mess up. A lot of guys leave their, their gap tape. A lot of guys are leaving them partially assembled in a hanger. And the, the 3M tapes or other tapes, if you leave them sitting, the adhesives are nasty. They get out in the paint and then they pull out chunks of paint and stuff. So so this is just a, just a Teflon. So we operate everything from Teflon. Hey, Robbie. Good. Good. Yeah. That is. That is.